how divination works in general. Like it's not just about reading cards. It's also about knowing the context that you're, that you're actually living in and what yeah. kinds of things are you actually talking about and what, how does, how do these kinds of dynamics actually go? How do they actually yeah. feel? And this is actually one of the things that, um, I have been, so, um, you may recall a few episodes ago, I came to an idea about uh, shape. Mm. So I was talking about astrology as being the shape of the heavens, right? So if you right. like take a, a given moment in time, then the, the heavens were shaped in a certain kind of way. And because things are shaped in a certain kind of way, then energy and whatever else will flow in a particular kind of way. And then, and so the, the astrological claims that you can make are based on the shape of that thing. And this is particularly, uh, this is an analogy that I like particularly well, because it is also it also functions at the level of molecular biology, right? Molecules right. and enzymes and proteins are shaped in a particular way. And because they are shaped in that way, then they behave in the way that they behave. Yes. They behave. And right. then this is also true at the geological level. So because things are shaped the way that they are because cloud formations happen in the way that they do. And the mountain ridge is in this spot and there's a valley on the other side because of those things, then it behaves in the way that it behaves because of right. the shape of the thing. Right. So I really like this. And so I was going back over my understanding of Taoism recently and um, it, it jumped out at me that the Tao is translated often as the way sure and so when you say that it's the way to someone who has been raised in a christian lineage yeah. then it sounds like the right way to live right i am the way the truth and the life no man comes precisely the father except through me right exactly exactly Which is, but that's not what the Tao says <laughs> right right or maybe you can divorce yourself from that and then maybe you're thinking something kind of Buddhist, the middle path, right? Sure. Again, so there's a right way to live and it is right. this way, which it isn't all of these other things, right? And again, this is not what Taoism is talking about when it's no. called the way. The way yeah. is the way that it is. Yes. Like things go in the way that they go because the, the, that's simply the way that it is out here in these streets and so it's the same situation as it's shaped the way that it is and that shape begets all of the rest of the shapes the 10,000 so, things yeah mm -hmm. and so what i so when i was thinking through this idea of shape then i th thought that i had accidentally found a back door into taoism like i didn't mean to discover the idea of the tao as the way but I got there and was like, oh, people have described this before. I so a lot of my Taoist practices through Tai Chi, which, of course, gets melded at some point into a form of Taoist or heavily Taoist inspired meditate movement meditation. It's not. Uh, they get connected at some point, <laughs> you know what I mean, sure. and then but it's been about 400 years and, the, you know, that's fine. People have been using it this way for a while. But shape is, of course, really important in that particular. It's important in all martial arts, but it's very important in how Tai Chi functions as a practical art. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in particular, round shapes, circular movements, this kind of stuff, because mm -hmm. the shape you take allows you to neutralize certain pressures or impulses on the body and move mm -hmm. this way. But if you don't teach, and this is where it's interesting, you can't really do so. Let me back up. A lot of times in martial arts, you'll start, you'll learn a couple things. They'll start you sparring within the first six months or something, right? Mm -hmm. In Tai Chi, they typically hold off having you spar for the first three to four years. Mm. Now there's drills and there's applications. There's all this kind of stuff, but like just like free playing around, like just get out there and see what you can do. They hold it off. And a lot of people criticize this teaching method and they're like, you know, this isn't, supposed to be fighting you know all this, how you can't learn to fight just doing forms mm -hmm, they're, mm -hmm. they're right about that if you want to learn to fight real fast do kickboxing it's it's way better for that um but the point is that until you have changed your body 
-hmm. and how you understand your body and the kind of shapes you can make, you can't spar as a Tai Chi person. Like you Mm -hmm. can't, you can spar, you can fight, but you can't Tai Chi spar until you've changed your internal shapes, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In order to be able to do it. Otherwise you'll just be using force and it won't be the same. You know, it'll be more like sumo, you know, which is a valid Mm -hmm. and cool art. Like there's nothing wrong Mm -hmm. with that. It's just not the shape of Tai Chi that takes time to develop. And I think that that's something when I think about the way there is a Tai Chi way, or at least a Northern Wu Tai Chi way. And in order to be in that way, I'm going to have to feel it out. You know what I mean? I'm going to have to find my way into that way. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's interesting. It, it's interesting when you bring up the martial arts this way because, and I heard you use this word, um, another word for shape is form. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so what you do in martial arts is you learn the form, right? right. And so the the form, without thinking metaphysically about it, which is something that you should not do if you're doing martial arts, right. the whole shit is metaphysical. But right. if you don't, just, if you're in there to just like learn how to fight or whatever, then you hear the form and what you think of is a series of steps. I'm going to do these right. steps in this order. And, right. and uh, the, the sensei is going to pat me on the back. Right. Yep. But in truth, what you're saying here is that by learning forms, what you're doing is you're learning to place your body into a particular shape and yes. your power is derived from that shape, right? Yes. So Mike Tyson has a form. Sure. You know, peekaboo boxing is a is a form, right? It's a shape of a boxer. And he is one of the primary proponents of it because of his physical shape. Right. His mm-hmm. his physical gifts make that a form that suits him well. Right. You know, that he can work. Not that he didn't work like a like a maniac to get into that thing, but like he he did that. And it's interesting. So with Tai Chi, people will be like, what's an application for this? And you're like. There's an infinite number of applications. It's not a system that teaches you one because what it's teaching you is movement and understanding. Right. Mm-hmm. So everything in the Tai Chi form is just to show your body. This is a shape you can get into. This is also a shape you can get into, you know? Mm -hmm. And then when you're in a moment of conflict with someone and you're attempting to neutralize, you start to realize, oh, I have all these, I have this language of shapes, right? Mm -hmm. You often don't make any of them. But you have learned to shape your body into these things. And so when someone else wants to put you into a certain kind of shape, you can respond with them and dance with them. So it doesn't look like the form, but it is entirely based off the form in the same way that like Mike Tyson in a fight looks a little like Mike Tyson working a speed bag, but not really. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, it becomes ways to understand capacity. Um, Mm, mm, And so, mm -hmm. you know, what is the capacity of the way that you are in Mm. as it arises right like like you know mm-hmm. and because you know the the Tao Te Ching does spend a lot of time trying to talk about like how do we do this well you know sure mm-hmm. you know and like and yeah, yeah go, go ahead. ahead hit it all right I'll, I'll say this one thing and then I'll, I'll drop off one of my favorite mistranslations or common mistranslations is the Wu Wei mistranslation which all people interpret a lot of times is like do nothing but that's not actually what the Chinese is saying. It's saying don't add effort. It's mm. effortless action because mm. you're just in the fucking groove, dude. Like it's mm-hmm. you don't have to add anything. If you add anything to it, you'll spoil it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, flow state. And yes, total harmonious flow state. But people think, oh, I don't have to do any work to do that. It's like, no, you have to do just enough work to do that and no more. 